Good morning and welcome to a word for Wednesday for Wednesday the 10th of June. It's good that we can gather as part of the family of God here in St. Mark's Old Hall, even though we're joining in from some distance away. So let us come before the Almighty God. Let us pray. Almighty and all-loving God, in awe and reverence we come to worship you, to proclaim your greatness, to acknowledge your power, to declare your goodness. Gracious God, Lord of all, we thank you that we can come to you in prayer, that for all your greatness, for all your wonder and holiness, we can speak to you as to a friend. Compassionate and caring God, with, our, with grateful hearts we praise you for your love that constantly surrounds us, for all the blessings of our lives, for all the wonder of your world, for the hope of our faith in Jesus. Merciful and forgiving God, in sorrow and shame we come before you to confess our unworthiness of your goodness, to confess that we have not loved you or each other as we should have, to confess that we have failed to appreciate your gifts and have taken your love for granted. Respond to us as we pray. Touch our hearts with your living presence. Fill our lives with your grace so that our love for you will grow, our faith will be deepened, and our lives strengthened for your service. Lord of all, we offer you this time of worship, our praise, our confession, our thanksgiving, and our petitions. We offer all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today we're going to be thinking about Psalm 116, which will be read for us this morning by Jen. Today's reading is taken from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he hears me. He listens to my prayers. He listens to me every time I call to him. The danger of death was all around me. The horrors of the grave closed in on me. I was filled with fear and anxiety. Then I called to the Lord. I beg you, Lord, save me. The Lord is merciful and good. Our God is compassionate. The Lord protects the helpless. When I was in danger, he saved me. Be confident, my heart, because the Lord has been good to me. The Lord saved me from death. He stopped my tears and kept me from defeat. And so I walked in the presence of the Lord in the world of the living. I kept on believing even when I said I am completely crushed. Even when I was afraid and said no one can be trusted. What can I offer the Lord for all the goodness to me? I will bring a wine offering to the Lord to thank him for saving me. In the assembly of all his people, I will give him what I have promised. How painful it is to the Lord when one of his people dies. I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have saved me from death. I will give you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and offer my prayer to you. In the assembly of all your people in the sanctuary of your temple in Jerusalem, I will give you what I have promised. Praise the Lord. Amen. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. That is a psalm of thanksgiving, a hymn of praise. It's the account of an individual's testimony, but it's given as part of a corporate service of worship. It could be summed up as why I love God and how I demonstrate that in my life. A worthy thing for any of us to declare. But we Presbyterians don't go in much for testimony, certainly not in our worship services. We leave that to our brothers and sisters in the Baptist Church or in the Salvation Army down the road. But it's a time-honoured tradition that we cast off perhaps to our detriment. For the psalmist begins by declaring, I love the Lord because he hears me. He listens to my prayers. He listens when I cry out to him. He paints a remarkable picture of God, the Lord of the universe, bending down and turning at the ear to listen when the psalmist cries. Well, so much for the idea that God is distant and unavailable. 
God is in many ways just like a mother, so busy with her household tasks, but she'll stop and she'll bend down and she'll attend to her child who cries out to her. And in the same way, our God is not so preoccupied with running the universe that he cannot take time to listen when one of his children cries out for help. He delights to listen. The psalmist goes on to explain his situation. He's been in a time of sickness, a time of impending death, a place where he had no escape, no hope. Well, we all know how it feels. Many of us have sat whilst a solemn-faced doctor delivered a grim prognosis to a loved one. Others have faced an emotional or spiritual death, a loveless marriage pressing out all joy of life, financial worries strangling the ability to live in freedom, a high pressure or unrewarding job that crushes gladness and fulfillment from our souls. And sometimes the only thing we can do is, like the psalmist, cry out to God, I beg you, Lord, save me. Or just, please, God. Well, the psalmist continues with his testimony. He says, I called on the name of the Lord and he listened with mercy. He saved me. He has been good to me. The psalmist responds with his praises for God's love. He offers praise and sacrifice in public worship, telling others, fulfilling his responsibility to God within the faith community. Nowadays, we seem to live in a time of shallow, privatized faith. We keep our faith internalized. For how often have you heard someone say, what I believe is between God and me, or I am spiritual, I just don't believe in organized religion. Or even, you don't need to go to church to be a Christian. Well, whilst there is some element of truth in all of these, they miss out on the bigger picture. And yet, sadly, for many church members today, faith is no more than mouthing the words, I believe in God and Jesus. But the faith of the early believers, the faith of the psalmist, is something much bigger than this. For our God is a great big God, as we sing with the children. God hears and responds to our prayers. Now the psalmist tells of a specific situation where he felt pain and abandonment. He tells where God intervened and he was heard and he was lifted out of that darkness. Our God is faithful. But we're not saved by our own efforts. We heard that on Sunday. God saves us and brings us into a place of personal flourishing, into safety. He gives us peace of mind. Therefore, like the psalmist, our response should be to assume a position of loving receptivity and gratitude. For we are called to respond to God's love. We're called to be thankful publicly, to give God the credit for sorting out our situation. And when we do this, we signal that the power of God is alive and his redeeming power changes and illuminates every nook and cranny inside us. The psalmist knows we can't repay God's love. All he can do is talk about it. And it's the same for us. We grow in our own faith and we encourage each other when we share these thoughts. We give praise and glory to God when we recognize his hand in our lives. When we credit him with the achievement, rather than imagining we have somehow sorted out the situation for ourselves. And I'd like us to give some thought as to how we can encourage one another and talk about what God is doing and what God has done in our lives. It seems to me that our standard church services don't allow us the opportunity for these types of conversations. And creating this space is something I'd like to develop further down the road, possibly while we're still in lockdown and definitely beyond that. But in the meantime, encourage one another any way you can. 
a wave at a window, a telephone call, a card or a letter, all are great means of communication when we can't meet together. And let us always remember to give thanks that our God is faithful, loving and kind, and he listens when we call. Amen. Let's come to God with our prayers. Lord God, creator, redeemer, listening God, we thank you that you hear our prayers. We thank you for all the prayers that you have answered for us, for the situations where we recognize that your hand was at work and for the times when things changed, but we failed to realize that you were moving, shaping, stirring in our lives. We thank you that you are always with us through the good times and the bad, in the easy times and the hard ones, in the days of happiness and the days of sorrow. We thank you for the fellowship we share in your family, for all it means to us, all it benefits it offers us, for all the ways it enriches our lives and enhances our experiences. We thank you for the unity we have in Christ Jesus, for the love that binds us together even when we are apart. And we thank you for the care we are able to show and the care we have in turn received. We thank you for the opportunities we've had to discuss our faith and for the way our understanding of you has grown as a result. And we thank you that we can talk together openly and honestly and know that our fellowship will not only continue but will flourish. And yet, as we give thanks, we know that not all are so fortunate. And we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted for their faith, whose lives are at risk for speaking your name. We pray for those who live in fear and dread that someone should discover the Bible hidden under their bed, that the police will come and drag them from their homes and they will never see their family again. We pray for them, Lord, knowing that you hear our prayers. We thank you for their faith and resilience in the face of danger. We pray for peace in their hearts that comes from knowing you. And we pray for peace in their homes and for a change in attitude from the authorities. We pray for those many millions who don't know your name, who've never heard of Jesus. And we pray, too, for those who associate Jesus only with Christmas or Easter and not with anything else. We pray for all those who desire to find peace in their lives, that they may find the peace of Christ. We pray that those who see beauty and complexity in the natural world will be drawn to the Creator God. We pray for those who seek the meaning of life, that they will come to know you and to know that we are made to worship you and be in relationship with you, O oh God, our Father. Listening, God, speak to us through the ordinary and the extraordinary. Open our eyes to your presence around us, to the love that surrounds us each day and to your hand, which is always at work. You have blessed us with so much and we are glad. Receive our prayers and our praise, which we offer in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining with me this morning. And I hope to see you again on Sunday. Till then, keep safe. Goodbye.